Varlow Creations. If you're new to my channel and you're stopping by for the first time, thank you for stopping by. Welcome to my channel. Stick around a while by clicking that red button for more crafting on a budget, more everything on a budget videos to come. And if you click it again when the bell appears, YouTube should notify you every time I'm uploading a new video, depending on the option that you choose in the drop down menu of the bell. If you're interested in following me on social media, you can find those links in the description box below. What have I got going on for you for today? Oh my word, today I am bringing to you an absolutely adorable, stinking cute DIY using these wood plaques, these harvest wood plaques that you can get from the Dollar Tree. Now I gotta tell you, these are one of my favorite things to DIY because one, they're budget friendly, two, they're wood, and three, they're very versatile pieces that can really be done to suit any decor style. Today I am doing a fall and harvest DIY using these using a new technique. Now this is a technique that I brought to you probably about two years ago and I've never done a DIY using it and because we've been staying at home because of COVID, a lot of items or paint are not accessible. Some of the companies are down, they're not restocking items, and so it's kind of made me want to venture out and figure out new ways of doing things using items that are accessible. And so today I am going to be bringing to you a fall and harvest DIY with these. I can't wait to show you what I do with these using a new technique that I think that you're really going to love. It's easy to do and the outcome, it's, it's amazing. I love this DIY. So let's not waste any more time and let's jump into it. Alrighty, so getting started with today's DIY, like I said, this is a new technique. It's gonna be fun because it's new. We will be using Minwax wood stain. Now, I've got a walnut wood stain here that I may be using, but for the most part, I will be using this natural colored, I guess, wood stain. There's almost no color. It's a very light oak color. And so it makes it easy to actually add color to it so we can make a colored stain. Now this is something that I've done before, but I'm gonna show you today how I do it. At the Dollar Tree, you can find these plastic ramekins. They come in a 20 pack. I gotta tell you, I picked up a lot of these because when my son Ray had COVID, I put his condiments in this because I didn't know how much sour cream or salsa he wanted on his food and they ended up being pretty handy. So since I have them on hand, this is what I'm gonna use so I can just throw them away when I'm done. Because I have these droppers on hand, because I make my own chapstick, this is what I'm gonna be using to take the stain out of the can and put it in the ramekin. If you wanna use a spoon or a medicine dropper that you get from the Dollar Tree, you can totally do that too. This is just gonna be an easy way to do it. I'm gonna put about three or four dropperfuls of stain in the ramekin. I don't wanna color the whole can, and so I figured the best way to get the most out of this can that cost about three or four dollars at Walmart was to just use these ramekins and color just what I needed for this DIY. You're probably asking yourself, how is Kelly going to color stain? Oh my word, using Artist Loft oil paint. You can get this 12 pack of paint for $5 at Michael's and 12 paint colors isn't all you're getting with this because you can make so many more colors by mixing them. And so $5 for these is a great buy and it's something that I like to keep on hand. As you can tell, this is an old package because I like to color my stain. I think that it's just a fun new technique to use when coloring wood. I'm just gonna add just a bit of the oil paint to the stain itself. Now, I do wanna say that you cannot use an acrylic paint that won't work because it won't mix with the oil because it's a water base. And so you need something that's an oil base that will incorporate nicely into the stain itself. And so you can see here that by adding the oil paint, it's gonna incorporate into the stain, giving us a colored stain. Now, when mixing this, you really wanna make sure and get all of those I guess chunks of oil paint mixed in because you don't want to paint your piece, you just want to stain it. Now for the fun part, staining our wood piece. 
you'll see as I apply this that it is watery and that is because it is stain and stain is watery and so it's gonna apply pretty quickly a little goes a long way you don't need a lot of this and you'll see that when you're putting the first coat on that it is going to lighten up quite a bit and that's because the wood is dry and it's really gonna absorb that stain and so typically when I'm doing a DIY like this that I'm using a colored stain I will find that I need to apply at the least two coats but if I want to make it darker I'll add a third coat and really it doesn't take long at all I mean you can apply these coats before the stain even dries because the wood is going to absorb it typically when this for this I guess to dry it's going to take maybe an hour but because it's summertime I'm going to stick this outside and it's going to dry pretty quickly so for the body of this truck, I'm going with the blue truck because it's the fall and harvest season and I am loving that the red Christmas truck has made its appearance on almost all of the holidays this year and I love that it is the blue truck for fall and harvest and so sticking with that theme, this color was already a color that was in the pack and it's gonna work perfectly. I am going to apply three coats because I want this to have a nice, I guess, aqua teal blue to it, but I still, like I said, wanna keep that wood grain look to it. And for the pumpkins, I'm gonna add just a bit less of the stain because I don't need much of it and using just the regular orange from this oil kit and just a bit of brown because this orange is very stark and you can kind of mute it out and give it more of a rustic aged look by adding just a drop of brown. You don't want to add much because then it is going to be brown but just by adding a touch it's going to really kind of mute out the brightness of that orange. Ah uh, yes, I am very happy with the color orange that I've come up with using the brown mixed in with the orange. I feel like if you're gonna go with those traditional fall colors, it's okay to have that bright orange and bright yellow and bright red. But when you're going for that rustic farmhouse look, the muted colors, the rustic aged, kind of brown based colors always seem to go a bit better and give it more of that rustic feel. And that's definitely the feel that I'm going for with this DIY, so we're just gonna stick with it. For the wood part of the bed where the pumpkins are, I am gonna go with the brown and you'll see here that I was just mixing the brown that came in the package with the stain, but once I applied it, I wasn't super happy with it and so later on I ended up going back and adding a bit of black to the brown just to darken up that brown a bit and then I was a bit happy. You can see that it is just a bit too light for me and so I wanted to go with more of that darker feel. For the tires, I'm going with the black oil paint along with the wood stain as well. And because this is black, it is going to cover the wood a bit more. I probably shouldn't have put as much oil paint in this as I did, but that's okay. It's just gonna look like really new tires. And because I had so much of the black left over, I decided just to take this stain and add it to the brown. And you're gonna see that it's gonna darken it up real nice, giving us a real nice walnut brown. And so I'm gonna go back over my browns with that just to darken it up. And yes, I am already liking the look of this. I'm also gonna use this brown for the fenders and the hubcaps in the middle. Now this is your DIY, so if these colors are not colors that you would prefer, that's the great part about this, is you take the idea and you take what you like, you leave what you don't, and you make it your own. That's part of being creative. You can see that after one coat, it is still a bit light. You can see that the wood really absorbed a lot of that stain and that's where you're gonna get that blotchy, uneven coloration, which is fine because I really like it, but 
it looks like it needs another coat. And so I do go in for a second coat and you'll see just by applying the second coat how much darker this truck already looks and I'm so much happier with it. While the truck is driving, we're gonna move on to these pumpkins. I picked up two of these. I'm gonna remove the raffia bow. Now don't worry too much about the hot glue that's left behind. Don't try to remove it. You wanna get up as much as you can, but if you can't get it up, don't worry because it's gonna be covered up with another raffia bow at the end anyway. Now using the brown stain that I used for the fenders of the truck, and the bed, I'm going to outline the back part of both of these wood pumpkins with this brown stain. I'm not going to do the three center pieces that are elevated, I'm just going to do the back piece. And again, you can really see how the wood just absorbed that stain. And so just to even it out and darken it up, I am going to go back in with a second, maybe a third coat of stain. Now again, I'm gonna take the orange that I used for the pumpkins on the truck and I'm gonna go over these center pieces of the pumpkins. I think that just adding the two colors, they kind of contrast each other, it gives it character, I think it adds dimension, and I think it just kind of makes this a fun piece. Some of you may be saying, why not just paint it? If you wanna paint it, you totally can. This is just a different technique. It's gonna give it a different look. When you're using paint, it's a solid color. It covers up that wood finish that you see. You can still see the grains in the wood. And that's what I like. I like the uneven tones. I like seeing the wood grains. And that's just the fun part of using this technique is you're not getting that solid color. You're just getting kind of a different look. And I feel like it kind of enhances that rustic farmhouse feel. Once these pumpkins are dry, I'm gonna go in with some of Tim Holtz Distress Ink and kind of a stiffer bristle brush, and I'm gonna outline the orange sections of this pumpkin with the Distress Ink just to kind of, again, give it some dimension. And once I've got it outlined, I'm gonna go in and just kind of add some lines, curved lines. Those lines kind of like parentheses, and I'm gonna do that to the center piece and the outside pieces, again, just to kind of give it more of a realistic look, make it look like it has dimension, like it's not just a solid color. And I feel like that always adds a lot to a piece when you just kind of fine tune it with stuff like this. And oh my word, look at how pretty this pumpkin looks. It looks so rustic, I can hardly stand it. I'm gonna cover up that hot glue that we didn't worry too much about with a new raffia bow. And the raffia that I'm using just came off of a spool that I believe I got out of Target's dollar spot. With the truck, I also wanted to add a bit of dimension with the Tim Holtz ink as well. And so I'm gonna outline the body of the truck. And with the truck, it's a bit more noticeable because the blue is so light. And I feel like it just really adds a lot to it. If you look at where I'm shading versus the other half of the truck, it really does just kinda give it more of that aged look just by adding these fine details. And so with the bed of the truck, like I said, I'm using the brown. Tim Holtz Distress Ink, but when I go for the fenders, because they're already brown and I don't feel like the Distress Ink is a dark enough brown to even show, I will be using a black ink on the fenders. I just love these wood plaques. They are so fun to DIY and you can really just bring them to life from just this plain piece of wood to something like this that just so fits the fall and harvest. To put these three wood plaques together that we have now DIY'd, I will be using this piece of wood. I wanna say that this is a one by half inch piece of wood. It's one that you can get at Lowe's, Home Depot, any hardware store. It was $1.98 and it came in an eight foot piece. And so for today's DIY, I'll be using two feet of this piece of wood. I'm going to take a hammer and I'm going to distress this because it just looks too good when it's perfect and not aged or 
damaged. And so you can see here that I've just went to town with my hammer on this piece. I'm happy with it. If you have any splinters on it, you're gonna wanna take a piece of sandpaper and just kind of go over it because sometimes when you hit it with the hammer, it will leave splinters. So you're gonna wanna go over that. Once you've got your piece of wood good and distressed, we're gonna take that brown stain that I used for the truck and for the pumpkins and I'm gonna go over this and I'm gonna give this a good couple, two, three coats of the stain as well. As I was staining this piece, I think that I had dove into the black paint and so I ended up wiping it off and going back and using the brown. I was looking at this thinking like, wow, this is really dark. This does not look brown, this looks black. And it took me a second, but I did just go over it with some paper towel and restained it with the brown. And so you can see here that the stick is nice and brown. It matches all the brown in my plaques. Now I'm gonna take some raffia and just feed it through the existing holes in the truck. And you can see here how I am going to hang these plaques from this wood piece, this is such a budget-friendly, inexpensive way to create a nice focal point piece if you wanted uh, something that could go above a couch, something that could go above a fireplace. And so I'm gonna cut my raffia just a bit long to get my pieces to the length that I'm happy with that I think look good. And once I've got my raffia set and all my pieces, I guess, set where I want them to be, I'm just very gently going to kind of lift up this piece and tilt it. I'm not gonna completely lift it up, just kind of tilt it back and place some hot glue on my raffia and then just place the wood back on top. Once I've got my pieces somewhat glued on, I'm gonna tilt my wood pieces back and I'm gonna reinforce them with a bit more glue just to make sure that these don't fall off. Now to hang this big piece up, I will again be using more raffia that I have cut to the size and the length that I'm happy with. And I'm just gonna hot glue it onto each side of the back of this piece of wood. And I feel like this piece needs to be finished off with a bigger raffia bow here at the top and I feel like that is a nice finishing touch. Doesn't make it look so plain up there and it's adding just a bit more raffia to this piece and just kind of tying it into the raffia that's already on the pumpkins. It's Wednesday, so Kayla has uploaded a video, and this week, Kayla is trying your hobbies. This is part of her new series, and she is trying white charcoal drawing. So head on over to her channel to see how she does with this. You can find the link to her video in the description box below. Now, I do wanna tell you, an alternative to the wood at the Dollar Tree would be these desk plaques. You could very easily just glue two of them together and you're gonna get the same length that you would using the wood. And because these plaques are so light, you're not gonna have to worry about this being able to hold the weight of the plaques because it's gonna be a very light piece all around. And so if you're somebody who just doesn't really like going to the hardware store and you don't wanna worry about having wood cut, these here are a good alternative. I hope you all enjoyed today's fall harvest DIY using the, oh, the blue truck from the Dollar Tree and the pumpkin. Please make sure to give this video a big thumbs up and let's get this video to, you guessed it, 5,000 likes because like I always say, each and every one of your thumbs up and those comments that you leave down below, they really do help my channel to grow and it helps YouTube to notice me just a bit more. Until next time, everybody, I hope you have a fantastic day. Happy crafting on a budget. Stay happy, stay safe, stay healthy, but most of all, stay positive and bye for now, everybody.